Hi, I'm James Catherall, co-founder of Catherall Audio, and today I wanted to answer some of your most frequently asked questions about the new multi-sampler inside of MainStage. So this new multi-sampler came with MainStage 3.5. If you wanna use the old EXS24, that's gonna be on MainStage 3.4.4 or older, which is possible. You just need to know someone that has that version and then they can send that to you. But with that said, let's start answering some of those questions. Let's knock out one of the easy quick ones. It is possible to use instruments created in the EXS24 in the new multi-sampler and vice versa. So they are compatible in both directions. Next is one of the ones that really bothered me once I moved into this new sampler. I really like to drag and drop my samplers into the sampler inside of main stage. So here inside of the new sampler, I'm gonna open up this mapping pane and this is where I'm gonna load all of my samples. I like to drag and drop them, but when I go to open up the finder, it makes the sampler disappear. I'm gonna highlight my samples and then I'm gonna drag and drop. And if I hold it here, that new sampler reappears again and now I can drag and drop. Just like that. The other way to load in the samples is to go over here where it says zone and then click load audio files. The only thing you need to be careful of when you do that is if you have one of these samples highlighted like this yellow one, if you click load audio file, it's not gonna add it to this sampler, it's gonna replace this one that you have highlighted. So you just need to be careful that you have nothing highlighted and then click load to make sure it will add it into your sampler. The other question I get a lot is people wanting to edit multiple samples all at the same time. In this new mapping pane, it's really focused on editing one sample at a time. If you try and highlight multiple samples, it gets a little weird to figure out exactly what you're doing. So if you go up here to the top right of the mapping pane where you see this Z button, you can click on that. And this is gonna look like the more traditional edit window in the EXS24. In here, I can see all of my samples inside of this sampler instrument. And this is where I can turn off the pitch button, turn on the one shot, and then change the volume of all of these samples. I can click and change any samples that I want. So I don't have to do all of them, I could just do some of them. That was some of the easier questions that are a little bit quicker to answer. Let's dive into some of the deeper ones that are a little bit more complicated. The one that I get a lot is saving this new sampler in your main stage concert. What used to happen is you could have your main stage concert open and push Command S and it would save the sampler. But now in this new multi-sampler, sometimes it doesn't always do that. Sometimes it might only save your main stage concert and not this specific sampler. So sometimes people will be making edits to their sampler and change volumes and change all kinds of other things. And they'll click Command S thinking that it saved that sampler. But then when they come back to it later, they notice that none of those changes were actually saved. So to make sure they get saved, I'm gonna go up to this top left in the sampler window where it says factory default. I'm gonna click there and then I'm gonna click Save As. And in this new pop-up window, I'm gonna click New Folder. And then I'm gonna name this folder based off of the project that I'm working on. That way, all of my samplers can be saved inside of one project. Because usually I use pretty generic names for the samplers, like Sampler 1, 2, 3, or Vox Sampler, if there's vocals inside of this sampler. I'll give them names like that. So this way I know that they're separated by project and I don't have to remember, is this sampler one for this project or sampler one for that project? They're all contained on a project by project basis. So for this one, I'm gonna call it YouTube Samplers, hit Create. And now inside of this folder, I'm gonna call this Sampler 1 and hit Save. So now anytime I make changes, I'm gonna go back and click on this drop-down menu and push save. So that's just a new habit that I've gotten used to. I can't just push Command S, I need to make sure I go up to that top left drop-down menu and save the sampler from there. And that will ensure that all of those changes get saved. One extra step that sometimes is important as well is instead of just clicking save, if I make big changes to the sampler, like maybe adding in new samples that weren't previously there or any other type of large changes that I really wanna make sure get saved with the sampler, instead of just pushing save, I'll go here to the drop down menu and I'm gonna click save as. And instead of calling it just sampler one, I'll call it sampler 1.1. So now inside of main stage, it thinks of that as an entirely new sampler but I know that that's still related to sampler one, it's just a newer version and I'll call that sampler 1.1. Because sometimes what'll happen is I'll add in some new samplers to an old sampler that I'd already created and I'll save it, but sometimes I'll close the concert and then come back to it on a future day and I'll realize that it reverted back to the original sampler one without any of those new changes. 
So usually better safe than sorry, I'll do the drop down, I'll do save as, and then I'll just give it a new sequential number. So sampler one, and then sampler 1.1, and then sampler 1.2, and so on and so forth. Only thing you need to be careful of when you do this. So I have sampler 1.1 here, and I'm gonna close this. If I copy this, and then paste it here, and now I go to this one, and I'm gonna click save as, and I'm gonna call this 1.2. Now, if I go back here, this is still gonna be sampler 1.1. Because to main stage, these are still two separate samplers, so it thinks that you want both of them to be different. So you can either make sure to go to the drop down menu and change this to sampler 1.2, or you can copy your sampler, and instead of just making a duplicate, you can paste it as an alias. If you wanna learn more about alias channel strips, you can check out this previous video that we made. So now if I change either of these samplers, like if I bring this one back to sampler 1.1, .1, and then I go back here, it's gonna change both of them because they're both now the same channel strip. All right, now onto the last question. If I'm creating a concert with samplers in it and I wanna send it to somebody else or just transfer it to another computer, what can happen a lot with this new sampler is when you transfer it to the new computer, even if you go through all the correct steps of doing cleanup and then consolidate and make sure it's all inside of that concert, when you send it to the new computer, what'll happen sometimes that seems to be this bug is when they open it up on their side, it'll say that some of the samples are missing in those new sampler instruments that you created. So to solve that, here's what I do. I'm gonna open up my finder and then I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call this samples. And now I'm gonna select all of my samples and I'm gonna drop them into this folder. And then I'll send both of those files together over to the other computer or to the other person. So I'll make sure they have the concert that's all consolidated and cleaned up and I'll send them a separate samples folder because usually what will happen in that pop-up is it will say that you can locate those missing samples. So they can click the locate button and then just point it to that folder and that should find all the samples for them. So the new main stage sampler can be a bit of a pain, especially with those issues with saving and with sending the concerts to other computers or to other people and having those samples go missing. So if you want to, you can revert back to main stage version 3.4.4 but it's not possible to do it in the app store. You'll have to find somebody else that already has that version and then they can send it to you. And that's it for this video. Hopefully I was able to answer some of your questions. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.